Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you guys all how to paint this fantasy landscape on a 12 by 18 stretched canvas. I prepped it with one coat of white acrylic gesso. It's all dry now and I'm ready to begin. So I'm going to go over the colors for you guys and be sure to look below this video. I'll have everything listed there as well. I've got titanium white, neon yellow, cool and warm, neon pink, neon red, teal, neon purple violet, cadmium yellow light hue, and Mars Black. So I'm going to start the painting with a number 30 filbert brush. I'm going to get the canvas a little bit wet. Wetting the canvas prior to adding your paint will really help um, lengthen your paint and you'll be able to blend it around easier without it drying really fast. The first color I'm going to use is white and a little bit of the cool yellow. I'm just going to start applying it in a gentle crisscross motion like this. Take a little bit more. I want some areas to be a little bit more saturated, so I'll use more paint and less white for that. I'm going to add some down here as well. I'm being generous with where I'm applying it and how much I'm applying because I want to use part of the color to go over with another color to make another color, <laughs> if that makes sense. So the next color I'm going to be adding is the warm yellow. So you can see the difference. One is a little bit more orange more warmth to it and the other one is on the cool side so both completely different and I recently had a question by um, one of you guys asking what the difference is in warm from cool so there you go you can see it right there the warm has more orange or red to it and the cool has more blue to it okay so right away I'm going to start overlapping with the warm add a little bit down here as well so this is what I meant before when I said I'm gonna use part of the first color to go over with the next color I'm gonna wash my brush out I want a clean brush for my next color and my next color will be pink. I'm always going to take a little bit of white along with that color. And I'm going to apply it up here in the corner. And I'm going to come over across to the right. Add a little bit down here as well. Partially over the warm yellow. I'm going to be a little bit more generous with my pink now. And I'm going to come around the right side, right down to here. Okay, the next color I'm going to add is my teal. Now this is uh, different than the usual turquoise I use. This one's a blue teal and the other one is a bright aqua green turquoise. So I'm going to start over here and layer over part of the pink. This is going to give us some soft shadows. Take a little bit more that up again. So 
So using less white is going to give you a lot more color like that. I'm going to take a little bit of white in there and just gently try to not over blend, but just soften a little bit. some red that I want to use, neon red. So I'll take a little bit of white with that so you can see it looks very similar to the pink but this one's warm and this pink is cool. So I think I'll start adding it right in here. Now I'm creating little circles and blending the paint around. I'm going to take a little bit more of my both of my yellows with my white, along with that red and the pink. Let's just take all of them. And we'll start overlapping and just being a little bit more carefree now, a little bit more yellow. a little bit more of the warm yellow this time with some of my white. I haven't washed my brush out. I like a little bit to be left back in the brush in hopes that I kind of just pick it up and it starts to pull in and blend with the other colors. Okay, so for the next color, I'm going to use my purple violet. And I'm going to take a little bit of white with that. See how pretty it is. And if we pull in a little bit of that teal, we start to get a light blue violet color and you guys see me use that quite a bit. So I was going to initially apply that to my palette, but I know that I can make it or something similar. And I wanted to show you guys how to do that. It's a little bit too dark, so I'll take a bit of white, start adding that as well around here. And I'm going to start to come in and overlap. I know this part seems scary. Seems scary to you guys watching, but this is fun for me. This is when I I know big things are about to happen and um, really gonna start to transform this into something. Now, I don't have anything I'm going by, no reference photo. I don't even really have an idea of what I'm painting yet or what the finished product's gonna be. I'm intuitively painting right now for you guys without any um, preparation. And I'm going to take a little bit extra, less white, and I'm going to just come right around the very edges. a little bit more depth so it gradually transitions to a nice bright focal point in the center okay I'm gonna wash my brush out next. This is a number five. 
I'm going to get my brush a little bit wet and I'm just going to take a little bit more of that same color and I'm going to start to soften get a little bit more water on my brush. And along with softening some of the edges, so I'm going to push like this and create like little circles, tiny little scoops, but I'm also going to come around and wiggle as if I was making some um, crooked like branches on a tree. This is what I like to call veining within the clouds. This is going to give us those little peaks. Helps to kind of create those silver linings on clouds. Okay, so I'm going to take a little bit of white now, soften this, make it a little bit creamier, and you'll see that it's still darker than those other colors. It's got a little bit more of a powdery finish to it. So mix up a little bit more. And I'll come right in here and I'll start to add a few little scoops. So it's a combination not only of the wiggling and twisting the brush between my fingers, rolling it like this, but I'm also adding these little half circles or scoops. I don't know if you guys um, watching have seen my in-depth cloud tutorial but this is very similar but this is just using more colors so you're going to create those peaks and the layered all those layers in your clouds by adding some shadows over top of your lighter colors you can also do it in reverse you can Add your highlights in layers on a darker color first. Um, so there's a few ways of approaching it, um, but I find this one to be the most satisfying. I don't know what it is, just when you layer over the powder blue like this, over top of all these other colors, you're left with so many more. And it's all part of the exciting process of painting leading up to your finished piece of work. It's very important to um, keep yourself excited while you're painting, while you're learning. And when it comes to art, I don't really believe that there's one right way or necessarily a wrong way of creating. How can you tell somebody the way that they're expressing themselves creatively is wrong. We have no business doing that, right? We all have our own unique way of expressing ourselves artistically. Um, I've just found ways, I've discovered over the years what is most enjoyable for me through my process. And I just wanna share that with you guys in case it kind of opens you up to more ideas and gets you to your own um, place of 
contentment with painting or whatever it is that you use for your medium. Okay, so I've got some nice shadows going on here. I've washed my brush out and now I'm gonna take a little bit of white with my yellows and I'll mix up and get a really nice bright soft yellow here. It's like liquid gold. And you can also come in now and add some softer highlights through your shadows and the other layers. So this is just another level of highlights you can add or you can leave it just as it is I don't know because I'm painting intuitively and I don't really know what I'm um, going to be adding to this I may or may not paint over some of these but I don't think about that when I'm creating. I just stay in the moment of what I'm doing and concentrate on that until I feel like I'm ready to move on. If I happen to paint over something um, during the process, it doesn't, doesn't bother me. I just feel like everything is meant to um, be the way it ends up being at the end of my paintings. I, I've learned over the years to just paint without regret and that doesn't mean necessarily that I'm always thrilled with everything I paint, but I know that I've learned something at the end of it, and it's been extremely therapeutic in the process. Okay, so I think I'm ready to move on um, to my next step, and I'd really like to start adding uh, a landscape within this and making just a beautiful fantasy world up in the sky. So I think I'm going to start by using an oval mop brush. I love these brushes. I tend to use these probably more than any other mop brush. Um, this one is well used. As you can see, there's a little bit on the end there. It's Princeton. It's one inch. And again, it's oval mop. The reason why I like the oval mop is because it's like a fat filbert brush. So I can create the soft poofy shapes that I want for my bushes and trees and leaves um, without it being too too round and I can just get in uh, carefully to narrower areas by using this I feel like I just have more control overall I guess you could say. So that leads me to these two colors here. So we've got all these beautiful pastel colors that just pop because we used a neon base for them. And now we've got some regular colors, so the cadmium yellow light hue and the Mars black. What I like to do is make a natural looking green. Um, you can just buy a green, the color you want. I um, go through so much of it, so I'm always running out. And I have so much yellow that I need to use. And I just found that this is a really great way to use up all those yellows that you have and you don't know what to do with. Okay, so just you can see here just taking a little bit of black and that yellow we're left with a gorgeous olive very earthy green that ties in so nice with many of the colors all of the colors in here actually um, because green is complementary to red but it's also very complementary to purple and we've got a lot of reds going on in here and a lot of purple so I know that this is going to look uh, really nice together Okay, so I think I'm just going to start, without thinking too much about it, I'm just going to start tapping around I tend to like oval and circular shapes. You kind of um, feel kind of welcoming. So I'm going to start that right there. I like that color. I just want it to be a little bit darker. So 
I'll just add a little touch of black to that. Okay, and then just tap around. I don't want to cover up the first layer because I like that I like the lighter colors in there too, or the lighter shade, because it gives us the uh, soft highlights. And I think I'm gonna have a little something here too. Right in with that purple. People just tuning in now are like, what? What is she doing? Painting a an, an eight? I don't know what I'm doing yet. I hope that I like this at the end. If I like it, then you guys are able to watch it right now. And if it doesn't turn out, then <laughs> you won't see it. I like to just to keep it exciting for myself because I've painted so many paintings over um, the past almost 30 years now I guess that's crazy but I started really young and because I have painted so much I need to keep finding ways of staying excited and help me grow as an artist so sometimes just painting whatever pops into my head I'll just do that without hesitation. I'll be like, okay, well, what if I did just do another circle right below this one? So I'm gonna just see how this uh, transforms. And like I said, it, if it if I don't like it, you're not gonna see it, but um, I hope that it does turn out and let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Just gonna start adding a little bit more yellow, a little bit less black and adding a little bit of foliage coming up here. And then I think I'll add a little bit on this side. All the pretty colors that I'm going over still play a part in the final color because you can see that warmth or the violet whatever colors under there will still come through it won't be the same color but the greens will play off of the warmth of the pinks and peaches and the violets Okay, I'm gonna just go ahead and keep adding a little bit here and there. Maybe, maybe we're going to have a, a staircase, just decided. A little staircase here. around this side and I'm gonna just tap some foliage on the side of it and then pull and drag make this a little bit narrower in here A little bit more so it's a light little tap and then pull and drop and 
We'll do the same thing. A little bit more of the black and then pull and drop. I'm going to make this narrower by making more foliage on this side. Again, wiggling, getting those same colors on there to make my brush nice and flat. I'll make these ones wider. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit of my yellow, white, and those other colors, the black and the yellow other yellow. <laughs> we'll just add a few highlights. Tap, tap, tap. I'm going to, after I blend it, I'm going to tap it out on the bottom to make it poofy again. And I'll add a little bit going off into the distance there. We'll come around the edge, it's off the canvas there so we can't really see, and then we can start to add it here. I'm going to add some highlights on the inside. I'll take a little bit more of my yellows and white. a little bit of drippy moss, a little bit of water on my brush, Right, I'm going to switch over to another brush now. I've got a number 18 flat. I'm just going to get it a little bit wet. And I'm going to take my black and my yellow again. And I'm going to add a little bit more to my steps here. Now right about here, I'm going to take that yellow and white and then kind of connect these, just add a little bit of light. I'm going to take a little bit more of the black with my yellow. Make it a little bit darker. Some of these stairs that I, I want to have more in shadow. The next thing I'm going to do is take some white with my teal 
going to take a little bit of cadmium yellow as well. We'll make a little bit more of a turquoisey color. A bit more white in there. Okay, and I think I'm just going to start to add some water. Take a bit more white right away on the end of my brush. Soften. Just slide my brush over top. And we'll drop down, pull over, pull and drop. And then just have it all kind of just disappear. So I'm going to wash all that paint on my brush and just have a little bit of water. Okay, I'm going to take some more white. I'm going to apply this again, pull and drop. We'll have a little bit of a splash, gentle splash, right down there. I think what I'd like to do is add a little bit of foliage coming down the steps a little bit because there's so much room that we can do that. So we'll just have some little bushes and flowers that kind of just spill out and start to grow across the steps. I love that look when everything's just growing wild and it starts to take over like you'll see moss and, and ivy and I don't know if it's probably not good for the house but it sure looks pretty it has a lot of character and charm I think. We've got um, English ivy that I've got a whole wall of it, like a big curtain of it, right outside my gallery. And it is magical, fairy tale like to me. And it's starting to just grow, just adding a little bit more of the black right in here for a little bit more depth. I'm gonna soften it with a bit of yellow in a minute. So right here, I'll just take my yellow. I want it to dry a deep dark green, more of a sap green. So yeah, I'm just waiting for the ivy to start growing up and around my, my gallery here. And then maybe I'll film it sometime and take you guys for a little tour. Let me know in the comments below if you guys would be interested in seeing uh, my gallery. I'd be happy to share. I'm gonna add, I've just got this mini mop brush. I think I got caught up in talking about Ivy and I may have forgotten to mention, but you can see it's just a mop brush, but it's really small. So I can create smaller little Bushes and highlights. A little bit of white, yellow, and you know, feel free to use whatever yellows, greens you want. I'm always letting you guys know, try to let you know that you can paint along with me no matter what you've got. Don't let that prevent you from joining along and painting with me. And if you're not sure, um, what alternatives you can use if you're really new to painting. I'm really good at answering you guys right away, so just pop it down in the comments. Or you can always send me a message on Patreon too. That's where I'll I answer first. Okay, so I think that I'm ready. I've got a few ideas starting to um, 
come in my mind now and I really want to add uh, a tree right in here that curves over so I need some burnt sienna for that it's kind of my go-to color I love having some burnt sienna in my tree trunks and I'm gonna add it right here because I'm probably probably can be using some black and some of my purple violet now before I do anything that reminds me, the purple violet, I get that question asked so much, what alternative can you use if you don't have the purple violet? Because the whole bean is set, all the neons that I'm using are by whole bean. Most people are, most of you guys are buying the set. For some weird reason, they don't include this shade, this particular shade in the set of the whole bean paints. So a lot of you guys are asking where you can get it or what you can use for an alternative. What I found to be really close, uh, it's close, but it's not nothing's the same thing as the actual thing, but magenta, um, even a quinacridone violet. Now those are a little bit more on the pinky side. So to counteract that and get it a little bit closer to this color, take magenta, a little bit of phthalo blue or cobalt or ultramarine blue. Okay. And if it ends up being too dark, then you need more magenta and you might even need to add just the tut the smallest uh, amount of white okay so that being said i hope that clears things up and helps you guys i'm going to take my round brush this is a number two round brush and i'm just going to get it a little bit wet first i always get my brushes wet unless i'm using a mop brush for foliage okay i'm going to take burnt sienna purple violet and black Now black is very, very dominant, so only use a little bit of it. And it really helps to um, prevent the tree from looking see-through. So I'm gonna just start right here. I feel a pull right here to have my, my tree trunk kind of just come out. And then I'm gonna wiggle some tree roots. A little bit more of my burnt sienna. I'm not going to over blend. I'm just going to add that kind of on top without pushing too hard. That's a trick. When you push too hard, you're just pushing the paint off. Okay, and gently push, wiggle. I'm going to wrap it around here, twist, some more paint, see how I'm kind of gently twisting and wiggling like I mentioned I was doing before with the veining of the clouds. I mentioned to you guys, if you remember, that it was like painting my crooked uh, branches on my trees. I'm going to take some of this violet and just add a little hint of this in here. I'm going to get a bit of water on my brush, loosen that, work that paint out of my brush because I've got quite a bit in there. I have another little one right here. Okay. Right away I'm seeing one that I need to add right here too. Kind of looks like a figure eight a little bit, which if you believe in stuff like that, I kind of do and kind of, I don't know. I've heard that it's very meaningful, figure eights are, well, it's a sign of infinity, I believe, but um, whatever 
I wonder why I ended up painting this. It's interesting. I'll have to read about it after. I take it all with a grain of salt, but I think it's kind of fun. I'm into just kind of entertaining myself with <laughs> stuff like that and meanings of dreams. I don't know about you guys, but I have like the most vivid dreams and oftentimes I'll I'll dream that I'm painting and I'll wake up and I'm like, oh, I hope I remember that so that I can uh, paint that. I'll paint. Um, I think I have it, that on my website too. I think it was Frida Kahlo that said it. I, I paint my dreams and I dream what I paint. I definitely have and I and I definitely do. I guess not everybody remembers the dreams that they have. I know my husband rarely remembers his dreams. More often than not, I remember mine. It's a rare occasion where I don't, if I don't remember them. Okay, I think this is kind of interesting so far. I'm gonna get a little bit of water. And then I'm just gonna turn my brush this way, wiggle. I'm going to add a few hints of this deep, dark, purpley, burnt sienna color. In here. I think I need another little branch. I need something right here. with a clean brush. I'm going to take some of my warm yellow and some of my violet. Actually, I'm going to take quite a bit of my violet. I'm going to just come around the tree and add some twists and wiggles. Not only for a little bit more character, um, but for more of an interesting highlight. This color, this violet looks really pretty with the green too. Okay, next brush, angle mop brush, angle oval mop brush. And I'm only using this because my other mop brush I used, well, both of them are wet and I, I need one that's dry, so. I'm going to just go straight into the yellow and the black and make my deep dark foliage color, pull them in together and then tap. And I'm going to start adding a little bit of foliage here, light little taps. I'm 
we'll go right off the canvas with that one up there. Add a little bit at the base. Isn't that pretty? So the foliage on this branch ties in with the arch and this entrance and the same with this one up here. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit of water. I just see how it changes the shape and I'm just going to pull some hanging moss a little bit more. a little bit more. I'll take a bit of paint on there as well. So we'll tap, tap. Now I'm going to add a highlight. And I'm going to take, this brush is pretty saturated, but I think I can just sneak in one last use out of it. Okay, I'm just going to add a little bit of a highlight here. So white with the yellow and the black. bit at the base of the tree. I think we need a few flowers. I've got, <clears throat> excuse me, I've got another little mop brush here. And I think I'm just going to go right into my pink. A little bit of red, maybe a little bit of, a little bit of white in there too. I don't want to over blend anything. I want to have a little bit of each color on here. And I'm kind of drawn to this area here. Maybe we'll have some pretty little flowers here. And a few going up the stairs. Take a little bit more of the red, maybe some violet this time, just so that we're changing it up a little bit. And a little bit here. How's that for some color? Let me know if you guys are are enjoying this one if you're liking the play on colors here. Take more of my violet. Because we're going to have some darker areas, right, where there's going to be a little bit more shadow. Oh, look at that, right in there. The base of the tree. Boy, I sure hope you guys are as excited and happy painting as, as I am. I promise if you guys paint along with me, you will catch this feeling. Creativity is contagious. Don't you guys think when we're watching somebody paint, it just invokes something in us. It just makes us want to paint along and create something too. Okay, I've got a little bit of my teal now, but with all the other colors in my brush, I think that this is a little um, bit important to have alongside 
all of the bright colors for the flowers. This is a very nice balance, a little bit of shadow. Mostly for me though, when I'm choosing colors and adding colors, uh, it's just a, uh, art more than anything for me is about color. My paintings, everything I do creatively is about color. Everything else is sort of a secondary thought. I'm drawn to color uh, more than anything with my paintings. This looks like it could be a mountain. So I'm starting to see a mountain in there and I'm going to use uh, my number four flat brush next. Okay, number four flat brush. And I'll take my teal with that violet. Ooh, a little bit of white in there. We'll just lighten that up a little bit first. And I'm just going to start to sweep. There's a little bit more white. This is an awfully dark color. So I'm going to add that. I'm going to wash my brush out. And I'm going to just take a bit off, making it more transparent and gradually work its way down the slope of the mountain. And I'm going to take a little bit of white. and add some snow on top so just a light pull and drag i've got a lot of videos showing how to paint mountains and this is how instead of using a palette knife we all remember bob ross using a palette knife and um i've learned that if you use a flat brush or even a filbert brush like a palette knife you can get a very similar effect so for anybody out there like me that prefers to use a paintbrush to a palette knife, that's how you can do it. So now we've got a, a mountain back there, and back to my teal and my purple, and I'm gonna add just a little hint of more of a shadow to make this side of the mountain have more depth. So I'm gonna pull in the opposite way Oops, got a drip on there. Get rid of that, catch that quick. A bit too much water on my brush. Okay, and this is kind of looking like a bridge to me. So the, the, you just start to see things when you're creating and using your imagination, the more you're gonna end up being able to use it and more ideas will come to you. So I'm just kind of seeing just a little bridge like this. And maybe a little castle. So with the teal and my violet, I'm just pulling, my brush is quite dry, just pulling different lengths. Some a little bit taller than the others, and right away I'm going to go into my white. And I'm just going to go over some of them. And then we'll work on the tops. So we just have those little, I need a little bit of water to help work that paint out. So on the tops of the castle, we have these little triangles. I think they're called turrets. I'm gonna make some of them taller and some of them come down lower. Okay, 
Okay, then I'm gonna take white on the tip of my brush. And I'll come inside some of them. Gently pull over, pull over, and then up. And I'm gonna take just a little bit of, you can use any dark color that you have. And it might be so far away that I don't even need to do this, but if you wanted to add a little bit more of a shadow and a few little dabs for windows or doors and stairs. But I think I'm gonna, I like it better with less detail and just more of a, almost like a mirage way back there. So I'm just gonna go over with my white. and then have our stairs or a path. Well, our stairs take us to a path. Take a bit more yellow on there. Don't want it too, too dark. Take us over to this castle. This other little land back there. Still need a little bit more white. It will dry, acrylic paint dries darker. So if you're wondering, where's my paint going? Why do I have to keep adding highlights? Like what's going on? That's what's going on. It's your acrylics are acting how they're supposed to. It's just normal that they dry a bit darker. So you're gonna have to be more generous with your highlights or learn, learn to use um, less dark colors. Okay, I'm almost finished this, but I'm having so much fun that I think I want to add a few um, flowers kind of hanging down here. So a little bit of the purple and the teal. And I'm gonna add just a little bit more to this branch right here. I like the shape of it, it just doesn't feel finished to me, so. I need to add some moss hanging here. I'm going to make some of the moss be a little bit purpley. And I'm just going to take a little bit of white. And add a little bit more down there. I thought I was almost done, but <laughs> you guys know me. What if we added some water lilies down here? Take a little bit of yellow. Okay, 
Okay, then a little bit of white, pink. What you want to do is just create a little scoop. And then for some more that haven't really fully bloomed yet, you can just make some little buds. I'm going to take some more white. And I'm just going to pull some lines, pull in to the center. So when we have this scoop, you're going to always want to pull in. That's going to be the spot that you're going for with your brush and your paint, the center, very center of the flower. I'll just graze over some of these flowers here that maybe will have a little highlight to them. Just soften them a little bit. Just a little wash of white is all you need. I'm going to take the rest of my neon yellow warm and kind of come in here and just dab the center of my lilies. A little bit of yellow. I need just a little bit more I'm running out of here. So I've got a bit more, just a tiny bit of white to finish this off and my cool yellow. I'm going to try this instead of the warm and just change it up a little bit. So we've got a little bit of both, which is always nice and a good idea. So see how it pops out and it uh, looks pretty with the teal water. Okay, I'm going to call this painting all done. This was so much fun and I'm glad that I decided to just go for it. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. So let me know what you think. And of course, as always, please subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you guys all soon in another video. Bye!